Um, wait for everybody to come on in. Uh, if you're on YouTube, just a reminder, um, github.com slash rwxrob slash boost is where we'll be going. That's the outline we'll be following. Um, and we are on Twitch live right now. If you want to join us anytime, you can come join our studio audience or whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't know what else to say about that. We, we had a, we had a really, I'm, I'm waiting for people to, to come on in here. We had, a, we had a really, really pleasant visit from Linux Tips. Uh, I just want to thank them for that raid today. Uh, you know, a bunch of uh, Portuguese-speaking Brazilians. Amazing, amazing high-energy stream. Uh, and that was great. It was really fun to have them in here. Uh, appreciate that. Um, yeah, we had up to like, there was like 450 people at one point in here. <laughs> it's like, I can't read the chat. There's too many people talking. I know. I don't know what's going to happen if that happens. Hopefully that won't be an issue. If it does become an issue, then we'll do things with like, you know, bits and stuff to, to, to slow down who's talking and stuff like that. But uh, once again, too, if you're a beginner, just a reminder, uh, put a exclamation point in front. Oops. Where are you? I don't even know where you are. Okay, here you are. My old school flip phone. This is how big of a Breaking Bad fan I am. I actually have a flip phone still. I actually I have like three smartphones that I don't use. I got this back when I was concerned about privacy. Not so much concerned about that anymore. In case you were wondering. <laughs> is everybody here? Okay, I see people saying hi. Um, yeah, everyone's saying hi, but they're doing it in a way that I can't. Okay, I'm freaking out. Okay, there we go. People are saying. So if, if you're a beginner, that was the time to try out the exclamation point. And so you can do that. Eventually, I probably will have a couple commands in there. I might even give in and show you the active current song and all that stuff. And uh, and that's that's all I'm going to say about that. So uh, I'm going to jump right into it today. We have 90 minutes to talk. And um, we're going to be talking uh, a lot about... Um, let me close up all these fun things. Watch cow. Yeah, if you want to see me coding on like the new fortune cow thing, we're doing that on, on stream too. So uh, what are we talking about today? Well, uh, we're talking about JSON and YAML. How about that? JSON, YAML, etc. And I know that's a sort of a boring introduction to the probably the most important structured data of our time. And uh, I actually, today I've been spending a lot of time going around, looking at other things. I actually uh, was kind of annoyed by YQ, which we're going to talk about in a bit, uh, because of some of its uh, internal problems. So this is kind of fresh on my mind. But so what are we going to do today? We are going to be spending the whole time parsing we're going to look at all this stuff from uh, let me let me actually put this in the boost uh, outline i don't have an outline for today because i'm falling behind uh, all right so we need to talk about uh use yq so you need to use jq uh to parse uh uh to, to parse and output uh json data uh you can use yq uh to parse and output yaml data and what is the difference, guys? Anybody want to take a stab at that while I'm writing this? What's the difference between JSON and YAML? And what, is anybody out there already know this? I mean, I don't have to be the one to tell you about it if you already know. Um, so, uh, okay, what is JSON and why does it matter? Superset, yeah. It's a superset of JSON. Okay, so let's talk about what JSON is. So, uh, and what is YAML and why does it matter? Now, I've already covered this stuff in the, the first day uh, of the structured data. It was like two days ago, like day 20, I think. But we're going we're gonna to talk about it again. And we're going to talk about the pitfalls of it. Uh, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, should, how about this? How about this one? Should we, we'll, we'll cover some of the more controversial topics today. <laughs> including one I really, I really railed on. Should I use JSON 5? Spoiler alert, no. <laughs> no, run screaming. Run for the hills. 
Uh, okay, we're gonna so stay tuned for that justification. And so let's let's just talk about this for a little bit. Um, what the fuck's JSON five? JSON five? Don't no 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 no. We're not going there yet, Juan. We'll go there at the end. We'll go there at the end. I, I discovered this today, actually. Um, and we have to talk about JSON schema. Uh, uh, okay, so let's talk about uh, let's say use uh, JSON. Let I just say JSON. I'm trying to put this in in the outline, in case you're wondering, the ones are all, you know, marked down, they, they increment automatically when it gets rendered. And the other step is I'm trying to put it either in question form or in the form of what would go in a job posting. So, you know, I can use YQ to parse out, but yeah, that would be something in a job. That's why it's, I'm wording it that way. Use JSON schema to define uh, domain uh, model and data schema and schema we'll talk about what is schema and what is what the hell is the schema how about that <laughs> no no what a schema is you know i don't know what schema is i don't know you know what is no what i actually wrote that in a better way some place so let me go like that is really bad no that is really uh that is, oh, okay know what ansi escapes are okay all right, I should probably put put this in. All the terms are like italicized because reasons. All right, <laughs> so I'm all over. I know, but it's more fun this way. So it gives you time to catch up. I, do you have a command line? Because you're going to need it. All right, so if you're wondering what to do right now, install JQ and install YQ. All right, so let's do that. Uh, uh, install JQ. Okay, if it's not already on a system, uh, just use INI. Baloney! You're not, don't use INI files. <laughs> How's it going, Philo? Uh, install JQ. So make sure you know how to do this. It's actually, they're not this similar. So if you if you want to run ahead for the day and you want to get, you know, you're bored of me talking, go, go do that. All right. Uh, know what uh, a schema is. Um, let's see. I don't know. Know the definition of schema. No, no, no. The definition of a uh, domain model. This is something we probably should talk about in the larger, you know, umbrella of data in general. But domain modeling is a thing. And so, yeah, that's gonna pretty much cover it. Again, what's the boost for? What's the purpose of the boost? The purpose of the boost is to help you know what you don't know and what you need to learn. It's not to help you learn at all. Uh, I'll definitely, and to cover the things that are not particularly covered well any other way. So it ends up being kind of full of tips and tricks and things like that that aren't covered elsewhere because that falls within the purpose of the boost. So if you're just the first time here, you're like, why are you not covering the whole thing? Because I'm not going to cover the thing. If you go read the man page or the help for JQ, I don't need to show you that, right? I just need to show you that it exists and why it matters, okay? Uh, so that'll save us all time. And then you guys can go through and do the rest. Um, so let's start with JSON. So let's actually do that search, shall we? Uh, in fact, I'm going I'm to be fancy here. I'm going to copy this. Use my, I use my mouse. Oh my God. We're going to copy links like that and go check this out. So let's, let's read what other people have to say. What is it and how it works? Uh, what is JSON? JSON is short for JavaScript object notation. Uh, one of the worst names ever given to a thing is object a javascript object confuses the crap out of people and we're going to talk about that uh as it went to the store information is easily organized accessible matter okay that is a bunch of gobbledygook that if you're a beginner you have no idea what that means so we're going to unpack that but we're going to talk about where it came from okay uh jason's introductory blah 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 you can go read all these guys on your own all right so let me so doug crockford i talked about this a little bit before but douglas crockford uh JavaScript of JavaScript fame, uh, the definitive JavaScript, the definitive, what is it? No, 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 that was the definitive guy. It's a different guy. It was uh, the good parts. And he defined the specification for JSON. So what is JSON? I'm actually going to go over JSON in my way really quick with you. And the reason is because I want you to, when you look at JSON, I don't want you to get bogged down in all of the fancy definitions and stuff like that. Uh, the rendering options aren't available again. Sorry, I'm going to have to finish this video without that. I'm really sorry about that. There's nothing I can tell you about. 
I, I should have checked, but that's what I get for doing it on a Saturday night. Uh, it would probably take us 10 times to restart to get that. That little side note, by the way, is me complaining again about Twitch not giving us multiple transcodings, and so people have to watch at 1080p, and that's it. Uh, fortunately, I'm I I can't I don't want to stop stop the stream again. It's it's never a guarantee that they're going to give you transcoding. But after this, I'll try. All right, so so let's finish up. Uh, apologize. Maybe it's a, you could you know watch the video afterwards if it's a problem. Um, so here's what Jason looks like. So let's first of all go into attempt directory uh, to play around here, and we're going to make a JSON file. So let's. Let's do uh, a basic JSON file uh, for, I don't know, let's let's do, uh, I mean, we could do anything. Let's just do people. How about that? So we could say uh, people.json. And it's not JSN, unfortunately. Some people do that, but it really isn't. And it just isn't. <laughs> okay. So the simplest JSON, the simplest types in JSON, I just net it out for you really quick, are uh, a string. So we could say like, you know, Rob, okay. Uh, that's a string, there's double quotes. Has to be double quotes. Uh, don't you dare say you can use single quotes in a JSON 5. Don't you dare say it. All right, because you're never going to use JSON 5 because you're a smart person. Uh, all right, so next uh, we have numbers, right? So like one, uh, how about this? We'll do my age. I'm going to do 53. Oh, 53 whole years young. And then what? So let's do, can you do numbers like this? Certainly. So 3.14, or I don't know, what should we do? Like 1.5, that's fine. I don't care. Uh, that's a thing. They're both numbers, though. Okay. As far as JSON is concerned, these are the same number. Uh, they're same type of number, I should say. Uh, that's significant to people who know about languages already because those are very distinctly different numbers in most languages. But I, I, those are both numbers. Okay, and then what? Then we have Boolean. So true. All right. So, 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 so. In fact, for this one, we could use uh, what is the value of pi? I'm trolling you. I'm trolling you. Because I don't know it. <laughs> I told you, every time that comes up, I always remember Brady. Brady had it memorized to like, 60 places or some shit. Anyway, so here we go. Break. <laughs> we got three points. So that's fine. So, so let's actually, so that's it. Okay. So you have, you have this, this is not a valid JSON file yet. Okay. But I really, really, really want you to understand these three basic data types. We talked about data before, uh, and we spent a lot of time on this. But again, repetition is good a little bit. So if you're just coming to this for the first time and you're seeing JSON, the reason I teach JSON to people before anything else, is any languages other than shell, is because it helps you understand data types in general. So, so like you'll understand data, the most basic data types across the board in all languages. And this is going to become relevant a little bit more later when we start to talk about why JSON matters. It's, it's the lingua franca of web-based applications communication and data storage and transfer and stuff like that. Uh, not storage, but in, in some sense, at ret, flat files and things like that. So you're probably using, if you've used VS Code, you, if, you're, if you're using anything right now, you probably are using JSON in some sense because it's, it's, it's capturing these things for you. But these are the three major data types to remember. Now, uh, there is a problem here because you're like, well, you're like, Mr. Rob, I know there's more than that because there's at least two more. What about all those curly bracket things? Okay. Well, the curly brackets and the square brackets are two additional types. Again, this is not a valid JSON file yet. We're going to make it that way. So the first is an array. So these, these are collections. If you come from Python land, you probably have heard the word, uh, <laughs> you probably heard the word, uh, uh, are you using .jsn? Really, Juan? Oh, well, okay. I mean, I don't know. Maybe people use JSN. I, 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 it's, it's back and forth. People use YML. I, I, I have no opinion there. I, 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 think, I would like to use .jsn too. I don't know. I've never seen it that way in production. All right. So here we go again. There's two more data types. These data types are both collections. 
And I, 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 you know what, you say what you want about Python and positive and negative, but one of the great things about Python is it's very precise in how it names things. I love that. I love that about the language. So it calls these things. What does it call them? Anybody know? We got Python people here. What is it called when I have this? So, uh, okay, what is, what is that? In Python, what do you call that? All right, so what do you, what do you call in Python? Python is a list, right? Good. What is it called in C? Does anybody know? What's it called in C? This is why it's JSON is so important because it unifies all of this. So in, in C, what's it called? An array. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the ways it's called. I mean, there's lots of things it's called. If you can get one, it's called an array. Uh, how about Java? How, how many different names for this are there in Java? <laughs> is anybody fortunate enough to have done any Java programming? <laughs> I mean, we could go on and on and on. By the way, in, in Python, what's the difference between that and this? We're going to do Python later. Don't worry. But this, this is not JSON at all. I just want to show you. What's the difference between that? Been a while since I used Java, but you remember that? Yeah. Vector. Yeah. Vector. So <laughs> a tuple. Okay. <laughs> that's right. Yep. Uh, so, so that's a tuple. So a tuple is the same as a list. The only difference is it's immutable. That means it can't be changed. That's it. Uh, yep. Okay. So, uh, and all of that matters to the compiler. It doesn't matter to you, really, uh, until it doesn't work, and then it matters to you. But the base idea, what I'm trying to get at here, is that this idea of a list, and I, and I love Python's word list, even though it's usually not the word I will pick, because programmers don't normally call them a list. Uh, it's, it's almost always called an array. Uh, in Go, there is an array, and then there's a slice, and a slice is an abstraction on top of an array. And that, in order to understand that, this is why we're learning C before we learn Go, because you'll understand it once you understand what's going on with C. Uh, tuple, tuple, tuple. I don't know. You can say tuple if you want. I probably said it wrong. I don't know. I don't. I don't say it that much. So tuple. It's a tuple. A tuple. Tuple. Anyway, this. <laughs> This, so what is what does JavaScript call this, by the way? So actually, let's do that. What does JSON call lists? I think it, they're called arrays. Because it is JavaScript E, uh, vector list. There you go. Very, uh, it is called an array, vector, or list, or sequence. Sequence. There's another one, the sequence, right? Uh, since data structures support JSON, it also works, blah, blah, blah. So in because J JSON came from JavaScript officially, this is called an array. Uh, I think, I think it is called as array. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, I hate that they have a million different names for these things. It's like, why did you not just call them one thing? Ordered list of values, stated types in JSON. Uh, skip object. Don't you look yet. We're going to cover that next. That's an object. We're going to cover that next. Array. So it is an array. Okay, there we go. We got the definitive answer right there pretty quickly. Uh, okay, so the next collection is what the next collection is called a what there i don't think there are more names for a data type than this one this one has got at least eight names and the name that javascript has chosen is the worst of them it's a dictionary in python you're right and i like dictionary why because a dictionary has what name okay name there's a key, key colon value comma. You hear that? Memorize that. Sing it. Key colon value comma. Key colon value comma. Key colon value comma. Key colon value comma. That's how you'll always remember it. All right. Key as a key. There's a key. Colon as a value. It has to all be in quote. Oh, it doesn't, I mean, if it's a string. Key colon value comma. Key value thingy. And you'll notice this one, see, I, I, my VI is giving me some help here. It's like, uh-uh-uh, you can't have one on the end unless you use JSON 5, which you're never going to do because you're smart. Okay, so I can't believe they did that. I really can't. Um, all right, so key colon value comma. Now, there is no comma here, but if I did another one, right, uh, I could do that. I could put name. I could put age. How about that? I could put age. So you can guess what you can tell where this is going, right? And you can put likes. Uh... By the way, these don't have to be uppercase. In fact, they usually aren't. I, I like having mine uppercase, but 
and, and JSON is very rare actually to see stuff in hit uppercase, but I don't care. I do it because it reads better in its YAML form. So uh, how about this? Likes pi. And I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something here. Use dashes. I don't know. A unless you don't want to. You just use underscores. You do what you go. I don't care. I I'm not gonna be mad about that. Where's the comma? I know. Give me a second. Give me a second, okay? Likes pi, true. Did you see what I did there? Uh, pie. <laughs> I, I'm having fun. 3.14, according to this guy, this is the value of pie. All right, comma, comma, comma. <gasps> Uh-oh, last one is a no. Uh, I have a trailing comma. Can you really? They're all following Go. Go is the first one to add it. Go was the first language to make the trailing comma mandatory. Yeah. You know why, by the way? Because this, if you want to reorder something, people are reordering stuff all the time and they're introducing errors all the time. And so they man made it mandatory in Go. It's the only language in it. Everybody else is trying to be cool, like Go. So, so yeah, including JSON 5. Um, I have a problem, Houston. Why is this one on? Hmm... I've done something incorrectly. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This is a number. This is a number. There. Okay. Better. Better. Gotcha. All right. So, uh, there you go. So, lots of fun stuff here. Uh, this is called what? What's it called? In, in JavaScript officially, this is called an object which will forever confuse those of you in object-oriented programming. But in JavaScript, this is an object. In JavaScript, this is an object, like in every sense of the, of the, of the, of the, of that word in object-oriented programming. And uh, we won't get into it, but JavaScript is a prototypical based object-oriented model instead of class-based, which actually gets you closer to the original object-oriented program. James, James Copeline, Jim Copeline, Cope as affectionately called in, one of his many uh, videos, he's one of the Agile Manifesto original signers. Uh, it's really funny. He asks everybody, is there anybody in this room who knows how to program an object oriented programming? And they, is, he's totally trolling them. And somebody raises his hand and goes, what do you use? And he says, Java. And he goes, Java is the only language you cannot program Java, Java uh, uh, object oriented programming. Maybe you can write class based programs, but you can't draw object oriented programs. And he goes, and he, and he follows up on that. And says, I have to talk about this because object, right? And after that, he says, is there anybody here who codes JavaScript? And they're all like, I mean, these are C++, Java, you know, Objective-C, you know, maybe whatever, you know, uh, small talk people. And, they're, and, this, and the, object, the JavaScript people raise their hand. He goes, huh, you might have a chance at writing true object-oriented programs. I'm like, what? Blew my mind. So prototypical object-oriented models, which we haven't even got to yet, and your, your eyes are glazing over, I'm sorry. But... The prototypical, the craziest thing is some of the greatest minds in computer science actually think that JavaScript is closer to true object-oriented programming because it allows the models of the objects to change over time. Because what? Objects in JavaScript are just these things, dictionaries, right? Now, dictionary is the Python term. As I said, this up here is a list. Otherwise known as an array, otherwise known as a vector, otherwise known as a sequence, otherwise known as whatever, you know. Uh, this down here is uh, most commonly known as a map, uh, or at, the Python calls it a dictionary. Uh, a map is a shortening of hash map, and a hash map is a data structure that you'll probably learn how to make on your own in C in your computer science class and data structures and algorithms. Uh, even though you should never make your own, you should always use the ones that already exist because they're too error prone and you'll do it wrong. Uh, but you learning how to make them. So making this work, you'll see that C doesn't have either of these. You have to make them. I mean, it, there's libraries, of course, but C, the language, doesn't support, doesn't have this. So there has, there has to be an algorithm that helps you decide how to look it up. It's like a miniature database. A hash map is very much like a miniature database. And that's why dictionary, I think, is the probably the most appropriate term, even though I don't do that. I, I usually call it a map. So let's give all the terms for this. Object, as JavaScript calls it. Map, hash map, associative array, 
Associative array is another name for this. An associative array is an array that has an association, a name, right? And in other languages, this thing over here can be anything. It doesn't have to be a string like it does in JSON. It can be whatever. And and and, and I I I kind of want to just prepare you when you go into this for the rest of the of the boost and maybe in your computer science classes stuff like that, so you don't get blindsided by all these different terms for the same thing. Uh, but I think that covers pretty much all the names for these. All right, so uh, a struct. Yeah, there you go. It's, 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 it's a, it looks a lot like a struct. It is not a struct, uh, but it does. It looks a lot like a struct. A struct is a different way uh, to organize data. The difference between this and a struct is a struct has structure. It cannot be expanded upon. You can't add another field to it. And we're going to get into that when we start coding in C. And then, of course, when we code in Go, is a lot of data-centric structure programming. Um, and, and I mean, we're going to... That's why I want to do C and Go before we do Python and the OOP stuff. Because I want people to understand what a struct is before they get into the OOP land and get confused as hell. Uh, which is completely the opposite of what at least the American education system would have you learn. Um, anyway... You'll be better off. So you know JSON now. This is JSON. That's it. Let's go. Let's done. We're done. This is it. Now, this is all strewn about in a file incorrectly, right? So in order for me to do this properly, I need to make the, the stuff inside of a, of a file, uh, unless you're going to read each line of the file, which some people do. In fact, uh, some people will do this, right? They'll put multiple records on one line like this, and they'll, they'll read each one in. It's a very common logging mechanism to do this. Uh, the file itself might be named JSON, but technically speaking, it's invalid. Why, by the way? Why would this be invalid JSON data? If you looked at the whole file, why is it invalid? Because it's not a single thing. Uh, if you wanted to truly represent this as a single thing, you would put these brackets here. And this is where you get compound data structures. And things get really crazy really fast, right? So that is a valid JSON file, as far as I know. What am I doing wrong? Is that fine? JSON underscore PAP. Nope, it's not. It doesn't like it. Let's do JQ people people dot JSON. You guys got your your JQ installed? I'm gonna have to show you how to install it. Uh, dopes. Dopesy, uh oh, I have a problem. There we go. Oh, it worked. All right. So, so apparently that's okay. See what I'm saying? And you're going to see what, how how this because we're adding structure to the data, it makes it just pretty much like a database. So this is valid, right? You'll see this. This is actually very uncommon, though. What's actually more common is to see one file that's just got everything in here, right? And uh, I mean, I could actually re watch this. This is fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna pretty print this from the v without leaving vi. So bang bang, jq dot. That was cool, huh? I I know you like that. You want me to do it again? All right, watch. So let's say you got this really ugly JSON. It's like all over the place. Blah blah blah. Oh my god! I just was like blah, 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 being lazy. Yeah, and you want to clean it all up. Okay, bang, capital G, jq dot, boom. Yeah. All right, so jq is your friend, I'm telling you. Uh, you can actually write some cool vimrc uh, on save events that will automatically clean your JSON up for you every, every time you save. It'll just make it beautiful every time. It's amazing. I don't have any of mine active right now, but that's, that's something you can do. If you want to do it on demand like we did, you can also do that. Uh, that's another great way to do it. So, um, so there you go. That's it. So that's, this is the most common thing is to see a map. Okay. Now, so let's go back to what we're working on here. So let's get rid of that. Uh, so why does JSON matter? I, I think I already covered this, but JSON is everywhere. You want to see Pokemon? You want, you guys ever see the Pokedex? Um, have you ever, have you ever seen the Pokedex? So, um, let me give you another example. I'm trying to give you a... Uh, yeah, here's one. So, <laughs> there's Bulbasaur. There's Bulbasaur as JSON. Don't you love that? Right? So, 
uh, let's do this. Let's do. Uh, let's see if I can remember how to do this. If it's, uh, it's been a while, uh, HBS. Well, you can look up the weather. You can look up like um, what is it? API. Uh, GitHub.com slash users. There. Ha! Ah, pulled that right out of my head. Uh, all right. So, so there. Remember I said that everything talks? So GitHub and a lot of these big sites, they're actually not web pages. They're not websites. Underneath, they're all JSON data. They're just data, and you just get presented the front end in different ways. And if you know how to get to the underlying data, you can do all kinds of amazing things. For example, let's say we just wanted to see uh, that one we gave us. Which, which one did that give us? How many, how, many, how many of these did we get? Oh, wow, look at this. This gave us all the logins. Do you guys want to? Okay, so watch this. Let's, let's see the first one. See the first one is login, right? So let's go look at all the logins. Let's see how many we can get. I'm going to run out of things. So let's pipe all that stuff in, right? Let's pipe that to JQ and say, I want to see all the logins. Oh boy. Index array string with string login. Damn. Oh, wait, okay, let's do this. Let's do, we have to do this. We have to make it dot login. And then you have to put this qu quotes around this. This is it, we're gonna learn this. Just give me a sec. So I'm trying to show you that, look at that. There's all the names. So in one command line, do I have to make my case for the command line anymore, people? Really, do I have to make my case for the command line any further. It, I mean, I didn't even think about this. I just pulled out. I, I'm not trying to brag here. I'm trying to tell you that once you learn the command line and the curl and the Unix way of combining things, I just I just got a list of every login that I'm allowed to read. Now, you know, obviously it's a page thing, so I'd have to read several times. But I just did the whole thing. If I put a dash R in here, uh, I can put that into a file and I can say uh, dot, uh, I don't know, GitHub users, I oh, guess, you know, and I can VI GitHub users, and now I have a list of the first users. Majobo, by the way, is Tom. He's the first user, apparently. User number one. Yeah, it looks like it's in the order of when they were added, too. That's kind of cool, huh? But that, I mean, but this, whether you want the weather, or you want obituaries for 2000, or, you know, I mean, I know it's morbid to say, but it's all there. You can get anything through APIs. This is why the most important structured data format you will ever learn is JSON. How many people have learned how to do JSON at school? Raise your hand if you were taught JSON at school, officially. I love asking this question because it blows my mind every time. <laughs> no one is teaching this. I have no idea. The most important structured data format on planet Earth, and it's not even taught in school. Not only that, but any computer science teacher worth their salt would obviously be teaching this because it teaches structured data from the very beginning. And they can grab Pokemon characters. I mean, come on. I'm sorry. I, I, it's just, it's one of my biggest rants. It's one of my biggest rants because it's not taught. It's just not taught. And, you know, you'll learn maybe how to make a web page in HTML, but you won't learn JSON. I feel, for, feel fortunate if you actually learn something about JSON uh, from your school teachers. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. I'm too woke. <laughs> I don't, I, no, it's, it's practical. Pra I appreciate that, but it's it's actually more a matter of practicality if you ask me. So let's let's uh let's 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 go back. Let me calm down now. I, I get I got kinda of rolled up there. I'm sorry. It's not hard. <laughs> it's not hard to rile me up. Uh is it enough for a whole course? I don't think so, but they don't even freaking mention it. No, they mention XML, which you should run screaming from. You should never have to use XML unless you're doing SVGs, which is fine. Uh, I, you're not even sure if your teacher knows, Jeez. If you're an educator watching this, I respect you. I respect you because you're so overworked and you have no time to learn what actually people need to learn. The entire cloud native world, the entire future of modern computing is built on JSON and YAML. JSON and YAML are more important than HTML to learn. <sighs> okay. Anyway, let's keep going. So, 
seriously, make sure you add it to your curriculum if you're an educator. Uh, if you're not teaching it, you, you are not preparing the future generation. You're just not. And I'm going to make the case right now. I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean. All right. Everybody's dropping like flies probably. They're like, this guy's too mean. Uh, all right. So <laughs> Research Project inventing an XML format. Oh, yeah. You wrote a compiler for it and everything. All right. Let me, let me say something else about JSON. Why is JSON so popular? Let me, let me, do you, okay, let's just for sake, let's just for giggles and grins. All right. Uh, we are going to do something really morbid and, and we're going to jump ahead to the XML day uh, right now just because I want to show you why JSON won. So I'm, I'm going to tell you, well, actually, no, let's do YAML first. Okay. Let's do YAML, for, YAML first uh, in this JSON. QI, what are you talking about? Oh, Noel. We forgot Noel. We forgot Noel. People, we forgot null. Null is an actual value. I should put that. Uh, nothing. Uh, how about this? Um, hair. <laughs> hair equals nil. <laughs> there we go. That's appropriate. Hair is null. I have null hair. <laughs> okay. Um... Stop it! I have to focus. That's hilarious. Oh my god. I that needs to go on a t-shirt. Somebody make that t-shirt. We'll sell it for merch. <laughs> Seriously, that needs to be made. Somebody needs to make that. <laughs> oh god, I'm turning red. That is like so wonderful. Okay, let's do this. Um so okay, so along comes a guy called Igni. Actually, Greg, are you here? Greg's probably not here. Greg should tell the story because he was really good friends, if not best friends, with the guy who made YAML. And I talked about that yesterday, and he was here to just talk about it and confirm it. Uh, he actually uh, was one of the guys who pair program and taught him Unix and the terminal and everything. So uh, where uh, did YAML come from? Uh, the guy who made YAML. He's, he's such an interesting looking character. I, I have to, I, I, he's, it's definitely from the Seattle time frame. Uh, see, now I could have done that logo. I'm not going to talk about the Tom logo today. We're going to wait. Okay. So anyway, back to where we were. Where were we? We were talking about um, YAML framework. <laughs> you know what they should have done? They should have put it in, bra in, in like curly brackets. Yeah. No, that's much cooler. Much cooler. Wait. So I, I, you got to see a picture of Igni though. I, I love the dude. He's brilliant. Uh, he's absolutely brilliant. Who And, you know, it's, it's so funny because... So many significant human beings who invented these amazing things are kind of like afterthoughts when it comes to some people. You know, it's like, is he, is he, you know, like crazy rich and everything? Probably not, you know. Uh, so, so Brian Ingerson, Kirk Evans, and Oren Benicki, uh, uh, Ingerson. So Brian is, I think, is the main one who, who did it, I think. And uh, I, I wonder if Brian's still at Active State. Active State used to be the place to work. You guys remember that? Any old people here? Maybe. Uh, uh, Brian, I, I just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, uh, Igni, if you're watching this, you know, I, I mean the best for you, dude. I am not trying to make fun of you. I just think it's, I think you look cool. <laughs> I'm trying to find you. Uh, so I'm going to do this here. Brian, let's go find him. Uh, no, God, no. Uh, yeah, well, so one of the, one of, uh, this is a cool thing about him. One of the things that Brian wants to do is make everything is called language agnostic programming, a, uh, a world and, um, and to language for YAML 1.1. Anyway, you guys can find him, but this is YAML. And now the, the thing you have to understand about YAML is YAML's got kind of a bad name because they did some really, really amazing things with it. Uh, you know, the closest example I can give to you of what, of what got YAML in trouble with the world. Uh, first of all, you can execute code with it. And, and that, that is no longer a thing, uh, as I understand it. I'm, I'm not clear on that. But, um, but that has always been uh, one of the dangers of it. But another is, uh, so this isn't a danger. I think this is a plus. But one of the reasons people hate it, so this is a big old long YAML file. Don't worry, we're going to do a simpler one in just a second. So, so JSON was invented 
to simplify data exchange, and I was going to show you that by comparing it to to XML, which I will do. We'll do JSON, and then YAML, then XML, and you you can pick which one would you do you think a computer would like to eat more. Uh, and and so here we go. We got here's Groovebox. See this right here? That right there is is what gets YAML in trouble with people because it's not just a simple, nice and happy format. Uh, one of the things about JSON that's actually the most annoying that I definitely need to bring out to you is that you cannot put uh, uh, where did my my thing go? Users, oh, did I did I lose my thing? I probably did already. Dagnab it. Here, okay, here we go. I'm still in my temp directory. Um, so anyway, so. Uh, one of the things that gets it in trouble all the time, let's say you have some paragraph, right? Life story. <laughs> all right. So you're like, blah, 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 and you have a line of turn, right? And you put a colon in it. It's like, nuh-uh. You can't do that. That is not allowed. This is not allowed. And it's actually one of the biggest annoyances of, of JSON. And it's probably good that I talk about that before I go into YAML because that YAML fixes this. Um, this is illegal. It's illegal. You can't do it. You cannot do that. If you want to represent this exact line, you'd have to do it like this. Uh, four. Yes, you do. You have backslash end for that, and you must use the backslash end. Uh, but so this is this is where things get interesting. So there is one school of thought that says people should use JSON for their configuration files, Microsoft terminal configuration, for example. Uh, there's another school of thought that says, hell no, it's made for parsing optimization and it's meant to be really fast and awesome. Now it's all happy. See how it's happy? And the reason it's happy is because it's been optimized for parsing. So I'm going to say something that gets some people all in a kerfuffle. JSON is for parsing. It's not for people. Did you hear that? I'm going to say it again. I'm going to put it in my, put it in my thing. JSON is for parsing, not people. Is and and that is why JSON five sucks, because JSON five dares to say we're going to throw out all of these hyper optimizations that make JSON the fastest structured data on planet Earth. It's physically the most efficient thing to parse possible. For the given data structures that it supports, it is the fastest way to read it, short of maybe some uh, highly, highly binary formats that we start to see with protobuf, and we're going to talk about those way later. Uh, protobuf and 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 some of these other you know binary formats. That's another reason that JSON got so popular. Uh, binary is for CPU, not people at all, right? So so JSON is for parsing that people. Now people can read JSON. And that's all well and good. The computer's like, yeah, you can read my stuff. I don't mind if you read it. But it is not for people. It never was designed for people. It's human friendly. It's readable and all that stuff. But the very fact that JSON, by definition, puts all of the white space and lines and slams them all together and usually comes in this form right here that you can tell, right? Usually it doesn't even have spaces in it. In fact, I can do that with, with JQ, yeah. Is it dash C? I think it's dash C. Yeah, there we go. See that? Isn't JQ your friend? I'm telling you, JQ is your friend, people. Uh, Antamal, uh, how about I made the logo? <laughs> Let's start with that. <laughs> oh, we're going to talk about that later, Rust Rustafarian. Uh, I'm not a Rust fan at all. I'm just going to tell you right now. I have nothing personal against you. I just detest the language at every level. And I can and I can objectively stand by that. But I don't want to argue about that right now, if that's okay. I love Tomal, though. God knows I do. I, I spent... A long time. I wrote a lot of the test cases for the Tomal parser and uh, Tom Pelletier's parser. If you know him and stuff. We're gonna get. We have a whole day on Tomal, by the way. So Tomal, Tomal's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Uh, it's. I think. What day is it? What day is Tomal? Let me just so I can kind of. I don't want to put you off there. Uh, so there it is. T Tomal's tomorrow. We're gonna spend all day tomorrow on Tomal and I and I. Okay. Uh, da -da -da. actually. <laughs> oh, is it really? <laughs> Look, that video, it's not fair to judge me on that. Number one, did you watch the whole thing? We'll talk about it later. <laughs> you don't answer that. Most don't. They don't. At the end, I'm like, so maybe. <laughs> All right. So anyway, JSON. 
JSON is hands down the fastest language for parsing on planet Earth if, at, that is also readable by humans. We have to put that in there. Readable by humans, right? Uh, I would love to have you back tomorrow, though. We can talk all about Tomla. I, I, you'd probably be more up to date on it than I am. I, I wrote an INI library, an INI parsing library for Ruby back in the day, too, a long time ago. So anyway, we have this. This is JSON. Nobody wants to see it. So that's that's usually what the computer loves to see because it just it can parse that thing. There's it, every time it gets to one of these these double quotes. What does it say? Yeah. It just, <laughs> so when it, when it gets when it gets to the double quote, what does it do? Does it, does let's let's do what the computer does. Let's let's be the compiler for a second. It's like okay, what do I got here? First character, first token. You know, this be official here, right? First token. Oh, it's it's a it's a left curly bracket. Awesome. We have an object coming using the JavaScript term. All right, and it's like next. Okay, object. Well, that means obviously the next thing either has to be a space or a quote. Those are the only options. It gets to the next thing and it says, "Are you a space or a quote?" And it's like, "Yes." Okay, I'm a double quote. If it's not, throws the error. We're done. It gets to the quote, double quote, and says, "We have a double quote." It doesn't say we have a double quote or a single quote. Wasted CPU cycle, right? And it says, okay, here we go. So, so now I'm in the identifier. Okay, I got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Double quote. Boom. I got to me a double quote. Now, there's some other stuff in there. You can actually escape a double quote as a key if you want. I don't know why you would do that, but you can. Uh, but anyway, so you can do that. And then it gets here and it says, there's a colon. It's like, okay, we got a colon. Okay, get ready. We got other stuff. Coming. Now, I can do that all, all the time. But the point I'm trying to make is that there is less variation. Because there's less variation in the possibilities, it makes for a much more efficient parsing. And what is the goal? It's for it's for computers. It's not for people. It's for parsing. It's not for people. Which means that its primary function is to be parsed. And it that again, I'm going to say that is why JSON five. Uh, uh, you know what? Let's just throw JSON five under the bus right now because I don't want to talk about it anymore. Uh, hell no. All right. So. There is a big effort coming from the clueless web community uh, to make friendly JSON. And everybody's just like going, oh my God. <laughs> because it just demonstrates how little they understand about the priority of JSON, which is on parsing, not people. Okay. Now, we're going to move forward now. I want to move forward here. So what is the priority of YAML? What is the priority? And, and Kubernetes has totally got this wrong, by the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm reading your comments there. I won't comment on that. I'm not commenting on that. All right. So uh, you got to be in the studio audience to see all these back room, back channel comments. They're pretty funny. I can't, I'm not going to throw them under the bus. So, uh, so what, what is, what is YAML and why does it matter? All right. So YAML, uh, YAML is for people first. It's actually for people and programming. I'm going to stick with the P's. It really is. In fact, it's so funny. You know, I'm a, I'm a cloud native guy now, you know, Kubernetes and all that. And there's this thing that's been running through the popular culture of, of, of our community. Like when people introduce yourself, I'm a YAML programmer and everybody laughs at that. And it's like, you're a YAML programmer? I'm like, yeah, I'm a YAML programmer. Because because YAML YAML is for people, but it's not just for people, it's also for programming, and I want to justify that comment. So uh so let's go through to here. What where am I? Where am I? That's not it. Let's see, I'll get there eventually. I'm I'm I promise you. Here we go. So this is a groove box. I was a big Alacrity fan for a long time. I'm not so much anymore. I've ran into a number of bugs that have caused me to look the other way. Please don't ask about that right now. But uh, I the, the developers are fantastic. Uh, uh, Undead Leech actually gave me uh, hacked the transparency into my fishies. Uh, so I'm I'm a big fan of, of Alacrity and Alacrity team. I just have chosen not to use it uh, because of some of its problems. But one of its biggest claims to fame is that it has a consistent YAML configuration file that you can actually code and it'll pick up the changes from the file and instantly apply them to your terminal. I used to do this to set transparency. Uh, but uh, what, I'm, what I'm showing it to you now for is to, to illustrate one of the biggest complaints about YAML. It, it is that it does have these elements of programming in it. It's almost because it's like a database, it, it has some elements from databases like references 
and references can get really hairy really fast. So this right here says, I am declaring this, everything here and everything that's indented under it. Uh, by the way, this was made when Python was like all the rage. I mean, like really all the rage in 2007 or so. And and so, you know, Whitespace CoffeeScript was going crazy. And, uh, you know, Jade, which is now Pug and all, I mean, everybody went Whitespace insane. And then they kind of came to the their senses and stopped doing it. And anyway, so YAML was conceived during that time, and it still is a problem. Uh, but here we go. So we got Groovebox here. So then, what does that mean? So this says, okay, I'm Groovebox, and this says, okay, I am. I am going to give this thing a name of X term, and and then and then down here, you can refer to the colors by a pointer. And this is when we get to C. You're going to those those the star and that ampersand sign are going to make all kinds of sense. It's why we're learning C next. Okay, we're, as the next language we're going to learn, we learned shell already. Next language we're going to learn going to be C because I want you to start to see where all this is coming from. Ha! Ah. Uh, so this says colors Groovebox. So I could have another thing here, another, and I could say Groovebox, and I don't have to repeat myself. It's a reference to that data in that other spot. There is nothing like that in JSON, nor should there be, right? Because this is for making sense of things for people. People can write you know, they can, they can write, I, this is how I manage my, my, you know, school records and stuff when I was doing, when I was teaching a uh, skill stack. And so that, that is the thing. Th there are a number of other things that they get very, very complicated really fast. In fact, all I have to do is show you the official page uh, of the YAML specification. And most people's jaws drop and go, I don't want to learn that <laughs> because it's just so airy. It, it's, 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 I, this is what makes YAML kind of, uh, you know, I don't know what the word is for it. It's it's kind of an enigma because it claims to be for people, and yet it's so freaking complex. That's why I put people in programming that some people who use all of the capabilities of YAML make it completely unintelligible. Now, you know, it, it has very, very, like, uh, liberal ideas about white space, which is really great. I don't know if you saw, but I made my whole CV in data. Let me show you really quick. So I did my whole CV. I apologize. I'm not. Uh, so here's my CV. I did it all as YAML. And when I said it's for people, look at how pretty this is. I actually, I did actually. I, the one, 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 one particular position, I submitted my YAML file as is. But because you can use white space the way you want to, imagine what this would look like with JSON. You want to? Let's actually test it. Good old JQ again, shall we? So let's, let's do this. Let's run this through uh, J Y Q, and we'll put, uh, I think it's a J, I think it is. No, nope, that's not it. What is it? Is it dash J? I have to see something here. Give me a sec. Oh, two J's. Is it J? Oh, I have to do uh, Y Q uh, E dash J, I think. All right, so that, that only did the first, that only did the first one. All right, let's do the whole one. So let's do this. Let's do um, uh, Y Q E dash J and pipe that into J Q dash Q dash C. There. <laughs> That's JSON. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> Uh, don't let me save this. Whatever you do, don't let me save this. It's in, it's in GitHub. It's not that bad. I could pull it back. But does any? I'm like that's one line. That's one line. It's like, yeah, no, I don't need to verify it. Hell, what are you talking about? I'm trying to make a point here. <laughs> What's the up arrow? You guys know about the up arrows, right? Please tell me you know about the up arrows. You can use arrows in these things too. So I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna take the C off now. Watch. There's your pretty JSON. All right. This is exactly the same CV in JSON. Now, it looks pretty good because I tried to keep these, these lines down. I showed this yesterday, but uh, undo that. And this is the nice, happy, pretty. You notice there's, no, there's not even quotes required. It, it just, it's just really, really intelligent about tech and picking things up. Does that make it efficient at parsing? Hell no. By definition, YAML parsing is going to be 10 to 100 times slower than JSON parsing because there are so many possibilities. When it gets here, it's got to say, well, I have an R, but that could be the beginning of a string. 
maybe, but let's look at some other stuff and decide, you know, and, and these other things over here, plus it has all kinds of fields over here that you can do that you that are just as, as stuff that you can't even do in JSON. However, uh, it's important that I say that Jake, uh, that YAML is a superset of JSON. That means that any JSON can be rendered as YAML. I, I covered this two days ago. I'm sorry I'm doing it again, but it's so important. Might as well do that. And, and, and the opposite is not revert. It's not true, right? You cannot always convert YAML into JSON. In fact, very infrequently can you go that way, but the one way you can go. So, so, so this is really, it's really for people. It's for people and it's for programming. If you, if I, I, this particular sort of pseudo database format, I find very, very, very appealing. Uh, it's very structured. It, it's not like I have to write it in HTML or XML. God, can you imagine what this would be in XML? Which I can do. <laughs> I can convert this to XML. Don't, don't tempt me. Uh, and, and you see, it's just, it's very easy to read. Uh, I can even have quotes inside of the fields and it just knows the right thing to do. It's just amazing. Uh, I mean, I, I, I got to tip my hat to the guys who, I mean, they could have just stopped with that, but they didn't. They went further and they created what is a, you know, a, a very, very complicated uh, specification. And if you go to the latest HTML, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's the, 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 probably the fastest one here. Where is it? I know you can't see this very well. Uh, relation to XML, terminology, prior art, goals. There's an example section that says simple example. And you're like, okay. Core schema, recommended schema, where is it? I can't find it. That's because I'm using a, a, a graphic thing. Full length example, here we go. So here's an example. So they have, you see how it goes? You can, you can have, but see line returns, right? It has support for built-in line returns. It has, uh, I mean, if you, you make it pretty like this, I, I, I like this one because it does get a kind of this kind of thing. Uh, this will all get combined into a single line if it doesn't have this guy here. Um, and I, again, I'm not going to teach you YAML right here. I'm just going to show you the, the little example that we did, and then you can go run this down and find out how much is different. Uh, suffice it to say that for the sake of the boost, the minimum you need to learn is the exactly compatible YAML for any JSON file and nothing more. And that is exactly what is used in the cloud native world. In the Kubernetes world, uh, even though the, all the internals support more, um, effectively, you don't want to do more than basic, basic, basic YAML, which is just JSON with a cleaner syntax. That's it. And you'll see this stuff. So you can actually separate files with this. I, I learned relatively recently, two months ago, that you actually don't need this line at all. And it's still relevant. It's still valid. So that's what's up with my CV. That's why I got rid of that. For the longest time, I thought triple dashes was required, but it's not. Uh, you can separate documents this way. Uh, this is how I'm doing my quotes database, sort of. Actually, it's not separate documents. I'm doing separate records, so that's not fair. But YAML is really, really great to learn when you want to create structured data that can then be used to render a web page or a mailing list or any number of things. And a quotes list, stuff like that. So I love YAML. Now, that said, I hate that YAML was picked as the format for all of Cloud Native because it's just so hard to read. I mean, uh, let's see, Q, get pods, uh, K, get pods. I think I might have some pods in my, in my kind of cluster right now. Let me check. Uh, I do have a pod. Uh, let's do uh, inspect, inspect pods. No, inspect pod client. Uh, 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 uh. Anyway, I don't know. Let me. See. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm being kind of. I'm trying to decide what I could, what I can inspect here for you. It's uh, get. Let's just do that first. Uh, is it describer inspect? I suspect, right? I'm still new. <laughs> I am not even going to lie. So I think it's pod dot. There's a pod slash, guys. I don't remember. Give me an example. This is what I, I should not do this. I still have a lot to learn. I cannot remember my syntax for inspect. Oh, I was doing nodes. What am I doing? Oh, I want to do nodes. Nodes, nodes, nodes. Oh, right, right, right. Thanks, Rust. Thank you. Expecto Patronum. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Uh, this is it. Just it's describe, right? It's not inspect. What am I talking about? Uh, yeah, let's do client. Yeah, it's just it's describe. Okay, so 
I, I keep I, I mix inspect and describe all the time. All right, so this is this is YAML. So you're wondering why YAML is used and everything. YAML is the language, YAML and JSON combined, but mostly YAML is the language of all of cloud native. That means all of Kubernetes, all of Docker, all of, uh, God, everything that goes with that, you know? Uh, yeah, I think Terraform has its own, has HCL, which we won't talk about, but, um, so this is a big deal. Um, and, and, and you can actually, you can actually do the same thing. We can change the output with, uh, dash O JSON. And I think, can you not? People do this all the time. Uh, I think I did it in the. I think it has to be. I think it has to be over here, right? Uh, <laughs> hey Dennis, we're in the middle of making a video, but we're you're welcome to join us. So uh, dash o json, I think. Wait, am I doing it wrong? I guess this one doesn't have it. Wait, maybe it's here. I hate switch commands. Whatever. I mean, let's try. It. Let's. There are many others. So another way to do this would be this. Uh, YQ, right? So now we got YQ E dot is a read only directory. Wait, what's going on? Anyway, I'm missing some stuff here, but you can you can pick this stuff out of here. Um, I, I did it yesterday with my CV and it was more reliable. Um, so we'll go back to that. K9S to navigate on Kubernetes. Oh, cool. Yeah, that'd be fun to see. Anyway, the, I, I don't want to. I'm getting. I'm getting. I'm going too far. The the point is that this is necessary. You need to learn YAML. It's the most important thing you're going to learn. You don't let YAML and JSON are the most important structured data that you're ever going to learn. JQ is the tool for parsing JSON output, uh, which we're we're gonna. We have 30 minutes left. We're gonna play around with that. Um, and we'll use YQ. In fact, let's put schema and data model up here. Um, I'm going to move these up because I, they're kind of boring and I want to talk about them really fast and then we'll, we'll, we'll end up the day just playing with JQ. Okay. So, um, what's a schema? Anybody want to give us a one, uh, let's just do a search. I do this because I want you to practice doing the searches because RWX, right? Uh, what is a schema? What does the internet have to say today? Oh, it's like really thinking hard today. Uh, no results because I spelled it wrong. <laughs> I totally spelled it wrong. How does it spell it right? Did I spell it wrong? Are you telling me DuckDuckGo has no answers for me? Okay, there we go. Schema definition. A diagramic presentation. A structured framework or plan. Uh, a schema is a mental representation a schema is a cognitive framework or concept that helps organize and interpret information. Uh, in, the in the sense of data, there we go. A schema is the structure behind data. That is the best definition so far. So a schema is, the duck is mad, I know, is data, structured data organization. All right. So I don't know JSON data, JSON schema at all. I have to look it up every time. But what it helps you do, so you guys back to that that one I was using, right? The uh, da, 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 da. let me get out of here. Let me get out of here. Let me get out of here. All right, so here we go. Right, remember this guy? Let's clean it up again. By the way, I don't. You, so JQ is your best pretty fire any ever. Let's just send that like that and get the thing. I just get my life story out of there. Um. This is, this has kind of a schema implied in it, right? And you can't do comments. Another thing you can't do, JSON 5 tried to put comments in, J in JSON. It was the stupidest idea ever. Um, so, but it, it, if I were going to convert this into YAML, right? Which I can do. <laughs> All right, let's do it right now. Let's convert it into YAML. Yeah, IQ. Uh, okay, wait. I got it. Let me see if I can do this. Uh, IQ uh, dot seven lines filtered. Oh man, hmm. How do I do it? How do I send JSON data to? Oh, I can just do it this way. I can say YQ E dot seven lines filtered. Damn. Well, I might be able. To, I gotta find. I got. I've never done that. I want to try it. Let me try it. Let me try. Let me try. Let me try. YQ 
uh, e people. Are you telling? But I want. I don't want JSON. I I want it as actual. I've never done this. I never done it. So uh, I'm gonna let you wait while I look for this. In place, update the YAML file in place of first YAML file given. Uh, force print with code, no. Set exit, no. Code is no doc, no input, no. Pre-print. Shorthand for style equals to JSON. Huh? Wait, let's try this. All right. Let's do capital P. What do you think? There we go. All right. So now let me try it again. Let me, let me see if I can do it from within VI. Like a boss. All right, so if I come up here and I do this, this I do, okay, Jason, YQ, uh, <laughs> I can't type, E, uh, dash capital P, uh, dot, did it work? No, damn it. Um, <laughs> it's, it, I'm doing it. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. It's just not, it's just not reading from standard input. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I that's what I find interesting. Uh, YQ is crap. I like it, but it has serious problems. I actually wrote a whole Zettelcast on about it today. It's got to be rewritten. It's not accepting my input for some reason. See that that absolutely works from the command line right here. See this, but it doesn't work because it doesn't read standard input. It doesn't know to read standard input. I did a dot. It has a dot. I just did it. <laughs> Tell me, okay, so from the top, right? So send every line to what are you talking about without it? Like this? Okay, I guess. All right, you got me. That worked. You got me. You're saying no dot? That doesn't make any sense. How can I select anything from it? How can I... What what if I want to do this? Can I, does that work? No. No file or directory. Dude, that is like messed up. Because I can't Oh, I bet I bet the pre I bet the P is the I bet the, I bet the P is what does it. I bet the dash P is what's doing it. I bet that's it. Let's do parse through the shell command. No, I'm not. Am I? Yeah, there it goes. It did it that time. That time it did it. Yep, that time it worked. All right, so I, I want to get the name. No, it's not. It's, it's got problems. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. The JQ works way better than this. Let me just put it that way. Uh, all right, so anyway, <laughs> now that that's over, <laughs> YQ, uh, a dash capital P to make it all pretty. Uh, it's all red because why? Because it thinks it's JSON, which it is not. I should probably put it back to JSON, but they're the same. That's what I, I tried to tell you. I can actually watch. I can move. I can move the JSON file to a .yml. Totally valid. Totally valid because it's a superset, right? Fuck. Um, all right. So here we go. Here's my thing, right? I got, I got all this stuff. And if you want, you put quotes around it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You notice how I didn't have to indent anything or anything. Now, if I wanted to make a bunch of things, I have to indent them like this, right? And uh, I can do that with all kinds of shell commands. I mean, bi stuff. So I can do this. I can do boom. Uh, actually, let's go down here and do this. I can do this. I can do jing uh, ip there. So greater than ip. That moves it over one. And so there we go. And and that's one entry. So if I want to delete all this, I get YP and then come down here, paste, and change all the values. Uh, door. And it's actually, this is one of the greatest advantages for the white space here. Uh, you know, because why? Because I don't have to do all this. Uh, true hair. Uh, gray. Beautiful gray, though. She has pixie hair. Pixie. Seriously, her hair literally glistens because it's gray. She's got gray in there. So gorgeous. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So now what? Now I can like do stuff like this. So I, I'm going to have to have that file later because we're going to use JQ and YQ to do our parsing and we're running out of time. I promise we're going to get there though. Uh, so 
uh, we're talking about schema. So let's look at the schema. What is, and this is part of domain modeling. So a domain is simply, you know, a word for everything within a certain group or area or organization or something like that. So domain modeling is a big part of all IT or any sort of enterprise. You are coming up with the things of your domain. And we, way back when we talked about all computing coming down to helping understand uh, stuff and what that stuff is doing, you know, uh, what its activities are. All of the universe is in constant motion and collision at the finite, most subatomic level. That's just the nature of existence. And everything about computer science up from there is understanding how all of that stuff is going on and making sense of it. And, and a domain model is giving things words and names so you can consistently refer to them and putting those rules about how to refer to those things is what a schema is. So a schema results from domain modeling. When you are a business analyst or a data analyst, uh, data-driven development, yep. When These are all buzzwords in the industry today. And when you... Are your job is to you know go in and analyze a system or an organization, and you, you don't have to be officially charged with doing that. Anytime you put a spreadsheet together, you've automatically made decisions about the schema or the domain model. The schema is a very specific word, though, that is the formalization of those 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 pieces of the puzzle those those organizational pieces and how what you're going to call them and so you know if you might just you don't have to formally think about you know class modeling and all this other stuff that people talk about you just have to go in and start writing stuff down and that's how i did my resume it was like there's all kinds of schemas for resumes out there and i'm like well i don't know what what makes sense uh c structure schema yeah and there's there's actually a language called Scheme, which is not meant to be confused with this. C structs are definitely a schema. Yes, they are. And this here, uh, as you can see, is it strictly speaking, this is a dictionary. Because why? Because I can add uh, another here, uh, and nobody dies, right? Nobody died. Because why? Because this is just an object. It's just a collection of key value pairs. That's it. I could have a key value pair that has a key value pair, and that gets a little complicated. And I don't want to blow your mind yet. But the uh, but saying I'm just going to add some random additional thing here, there's no rule against that. And so a schema would be one of the ways to say you can't add an extra thing. And and there's and how strict your schemas are, how strict your your the typing of your system is. Schema and type kind of go together because. To have a schema, you have to define the types of your system. And we've already talked about the basic types that everybody pretty much agrees on, right? Strings, even though on C they're character arrays. And, you know, everybody's got a different name for it. But it, JSON, its great claim to fame is that it largely codified, you know, the most important data types of sort of a universal schema. And then everything up from that is, is additions. But, but then people immediately ran into problems, right? So if you want to exchange your JSON file, your CV file, your YAML file with somebody else, and you want to say, okay, here's my CV. And you're like, well, my CV uses the word occupation instead of employment. You got a problem because now you don't agree on the schema and you can't communicate because you don't agree on what the names of the things are. Whether it's, you know, whether Bulbastor and Charmander both have the same number of things or they're different categories, the names of all of that stuff is are the types in the schema. So I, strangely enough, you can actually use one of these structured data formats, such as JSON schema, to define the things of your system, to define the types, and to say, okay, here's what it has to be. And then what you do is you compare any of the data coming in and say, hey, do you match this schema? If you don't match, and you can make certain areas of your schema looser than others with JSON, it depends on the schema uh, language, which is there to help you define a language. And we're actually going to jump ahead eventually and uh, talk about Pagan, which uh, is designed to not only define schemas, but the grammars of languages in terms of like, okay, this has a backslash and then it has this and this. And that's that's a that's even further. So I don't want you to get confused by by thinking about, you know, the grammars and the order of 
the language, how a language is written with what are the things of my system? What are the, what's the domain model? All right. And I spent a lot of time on that, but that is probably one of the more important topics that you'll ever uh, practice. And it's part of the art of technology is being able to find the things of your system and to communicate about them effectively, easily, and consistently. Because uh, if you, uh, I, I think it is, I, I think, I think th this is the act of creation to me. So when you are coming up with the stuff of your system uh, and then everything else is just creating a view of that stuff. And that's that's essentially what either front end database views are or front end, you know, front end has come to mean the web, the web people as usual have co-opted a term for themselves. Uh, but front end means you know, creating the views, the user experiences, the user views of the things in the system. But there's an extreme amount of of pleasure just setting up, you know, what are those things in the system and and dealing with those relationships and 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 modeling all of that. And if if you want to have a lot of fun with this, get with you saw me do it with the curl and JSON, go look at the API just for GitHub. You know, all of the, the domain model underneath every page that you see on GitHub, start to do those curl requests against api.github.com and and you will start to see, you know, all the stuff that's there or make yourself a Twitch bot or a Discord bot. Any of these systems, when you when you start to kind of make cool stuff that, you know, you can like, I don't know, mark stuff from the command line, you're starting to use the APIs, the application programming interfaces that fundamentally uh, wrap the schema, the domain model of that system, but not just the data. A, a, an API adds another thing. It adds the the stuff you can do in addition to just the stuff. There's the stuff, and then there's the procedures or the the, the stuff you can, you know, the methods you can ask to to be done on that. So that's quite a, a, a verbose explanation. But that's what a schema is. I, I do want to show you an example of JSON schema. Uh, I I have not done one yet. Uh, I do think that it's probably uh, a way XM, XML actually has when, when the XML internet tried to become a thing and then died a horrible death. Um, it was really trying to do this. There was actually another uh, movement to do with the data web, which was largely based on this. And I personally have an effort called the knowledge exchange grid, uh, which allows you to have data.yml files in addition to readme.md or index.html files so that you can universally exchange data using YAML and then pre-declare what your schema is uh, and just have data.yml in your file. If you want to be a participant in the Knowledge Exchange Grid project, just stay tuned. I usually work on that on the weekends and stuff. I haven't worked on it for a while, but that's that's a thing that I'm super interested in because it's more about exchanging just you know readable knowledge like in Markdown and index.html files. These days, it's more about exchanging the, the organization of the stuff and if you if you dig deep enough uh you can look in that stuff yeah if if if, if you want to talk about the knowledge exchange grid we can talk about that but it, it also uses uh, a way to share that data so you can have you know you can control the own uh, your own um search optimizations for your the people that you follow and then set up your own search engine independently using only the people in your circle of trust in your in your knowledge exchange rate plug for that if you want to if you want anything it's association for knowledge worker uh, associated ah, the association for federated knowledge workers afk works is a as a as an initiative that i like to kick off i'm working full-time and we're kind of other stuff but that i don't forget i haven't forgot about it uh so aug if you're watching this i haven't forgot about you he's one of my biggest proponents of that whole effort um so anyway let's go back down to this um uh, json schema is the home of json schema uh, is a hypermedia ready and ideal for annotating your existing JSON based HTML? I, I'm not, I gotta tell you, I'm not a fan of this project. I feel like it wasn't really well thought out. Uh, however, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is, this has become, uh, hands down, uh, what appear, I mean, this and protobuf, protobuf is a much more higher performance sort of API way of defining the things of your system, but it's mostly for defining really fast ways to communicate things uh, that can be parsed really quickly. Uh, it's, 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 so it's, it's like saying, hey, here comes a really compact message really quickly and here's its order, get ready. And it's not for humans at all. It's, it's more, but JSON schema is more about being for humans. You can actually add comments and stuff. And uh, let me see if I can find you an example. So JSON schema, man, they're getting crazy with this. Uh, examples. Let's go look at some. So here you go. Um, you can go look at them on your own too, but 
So they, uh, you know, you, you can have keys that have, uh, you know, dollar signs in them and stuff. So what they do is they say, hey, here's here's these reserve words, title. This this type of thing is a person. What type of thing is it? It's an object. What properties does it have? And it means it has to have a first name, which must be a string. You can probably infer from our earlier conversation about these these types. It says, and then it has a description of what that type is. So if I were to write based on this, if I were to write a JSON schema for this, you could probably imagine what it would be. It would be, uh, let's say it would be title person type object, obviously. And mine's very similar, right? It would be, I would have maybe age. Here we go. Age type integer. I didn't plan this, but it just works out nice. It would have a description. The description is just for the person looking at the schema. It's not for, and it's not going to be stored anywhere in the data. Uh, and then, you know, is the minimum zero or one, you know, uh, the, one of the really great things about JSON schema, I'll give them credit for is they do actually add regular expression validation to it. So you can actually say you can get very, very precise with the possible values, uh, by defining them as regular expressions, which is quite a bit of overhead, uh, for validation, but it does allow you to provide the rules for what not only is this string allowed, but the string must have three words in it. It must start with an uppercase letter. It must be, I'm, I'm not done for another 10 minutes. I have 10 minutes. And then you want to walk? Yeah, but I'm in the middle of my stream. Like I care. I, I got to lock the door. I, you guys, remind me to lock the door next time. Are you coming in the, what did, did you do your yoga? Mine. Oh, oh. <laughs> Mine. We're talking, we're talking about JSON schema. And it's uh, like very exciting. Okay, whatever. All right, we'll go walk the dog after this. Be careful, my Frau. <laughs> She's crazy. I'm like getting all 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 red again. You're making me all red again. Um. Anyway, so <laughs> can we be done? <laughs> uh, okay. So so this is um this is it. JSON schema draft. You have a person. You have an age. Aren't you excited? I, I don't need to sell that anymore yet. Okay, now, the last, I've been doing this for the last two days. The human Pomo, she really is. She's my, she really is my human Pomo. Wait, Pomo? How about this? Pomo duration, eight minutes. Oh, damn. There we go. Now I'm done. Now I'm done. I have seven minutes left. There's my Pomo. Uh, I should send a poem next time so I can keep track of how much I'm talking. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't need to. So the only thing left here is to like select stuff. So let's, let me give you an example. You saw me playing with this all the time. Uh, let me just, so, so I have seven minutes. Let me tell you what you need to learn and then I'll mess with it. Okay. So uh, I don't, you should probably learn JSON schema or at least be able to know about it and go back to it at some point and say, hey, you exist. Let's go look up how to do you. Right, which I have to do every time. There's no way I'm going to memorize that. Uh, you need to know what domain modeling is. You know what a schema is. You need to know. Um, I did that already. You need to use JQ to be able to parse and output JSON data. You need to have JQ installed. You need to have YQ installed. But may I suggest there's several versions. May I suggest the version, the Go version, uh, which is in my workspace. So I'm going to go find that for you right now. Again, if you if you're new and you don't know and you want to just download my workspace. Uh, you can run the workspace anytime with docker run uh, dash 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 it dash dash rm uh, rwx rob slash workspace and that will download. It'll take you a little bit to download it, but um, it's smaller than it used to be and you can get a standard, you can get a version of my namespace if you want. Um, I mean my workspace. But in here I have which file I got for this. So I'm going to go find it for you. Um, and, and there's no doubt this is the best of it. it it's not anymore. Uh, uh it's only, it's only, it's only one gigabyte now. It's 1.2 gigabytes now. I know that's still big, but <laughs> it was three gigabytes before. Yeah, I know. I'm not proud, but it's a workspace. It's a workspace. It's like how, compare it to how long it would take you to install your full Linux distro. Cause that's what it is. But you get the fishies. <laughs> Exactly. We have to have priorities. Uh, it's got my search thing in there and all kinds of stuff. So Mike Farah, Mike Mike Farah, Farah, Farah. I don't know how to say it. Uh, this is the one you want. 
It's written to go. It's really fast. It's got the most support. It's still got really prob big problems. Uh, and I don't know what else to say. Uh, that's the one. That's the one you want to use. So, so uh, let's do go over the slight differences between JQ and YQ. This is the gotcha. So they're not one for one compatible. Their selection criteria are, however, I'm going to give you a really quick uh, sampling of that. I've been doing it all night, but so the first thing is we have um, here we have. Let's go back to our sample. Um, all right, so we have our people here, right? So if it was, let's make it. Let's 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 make it uh, JavaScript. All right, let's do this. Let's do. Or JSON, YQ uh, E dash J people. All right, so let's dump that into a file. We'll call it people. You should know how to do all this. We covered this many days ago, but people.json. So now we have a. You know what? Let's, let's somebody somebody out there is going to be happy at doing this. <laughs> now they both have three letter suffixes. Yay. Um, what, JQ. So JQ, you have to have the selection criteria. You have some options first, of course. Uh, the only option to really keep in mind is R. R makes it raw, so you don't get the quotes and stuff. Uh, if you're going to use it for anything in the script, you probably want to have raw in there. But um, and so yeah, if you want to do JQ, dot means everything starting at the top of the tree, and then you just give it the file name uh, or you know cat it in or whatever. Uh, why are you not so happy? Am I in the wrong place now? Why are you not file completing? I'm okay. There we go. So, and it doesn't nice color. It's like your built-in pretty printer. You probably want this for sure. Now, if again, if you do dash R, it'll it'll you can do no color. If you pipe it, it automatically turns the colors off. Uh, but anyway, so a couple a couple things here. First things first. Unless you're doing something really, really simple, this is the number one gotcha. Again, the purpose of the boost is to help you get around the gotchas. This is so to select all of an array, or to select item number one from the array, you would do that. Problem is, is it it it's got problems. It sort of looks like it's going to work until you do stuff like this. Yeah, I mean that that's tending to work really great, but it doesn't always. Let me just I'm going to give you a gotcha right now surround the stuff in single quotes before you get burned because you will you will eventually get burned by not doing that so always put that's my first rule uh, put that in the boost uh, put that in your where are you oh not you where are you where are you two uh, uh, put it here uh, always uh, surround query in single quotes and um, don't use, I mean, double quotes are used for other stuff, so stick with single quotes would be good. Same goes for set or any other language parser. So if you get if you get rid of that, it'll do it for everything. Now that's cool. And there's another query method for JSON called uh, JSON filter, what is it called? JSON path. And JQ roughly approximates that. And if you're a cloud native person, you kind of have to pick where you're going to invest your time and your mind whether you're going to learn JSON path or you're going to learn JQ. I really strongly advise you to learn JQ because it applies everywhere. Uh, JSON path is only supported in a few isolated cases by the application itself. So all that stuff from cloud native Kubernetes and everything can be parsed out. You can go get the individual fields that you want. So yesterday I wrote a script to download all the names, all the, all the stuff with namespace equals app. And then we ran the Helm two to three migration script on it. And to do that, I did this. I, I did a JQ, and I called out which name it was. You see those, those quotes are kind of annoying, right? So this is where a dash R comes in. And so then you get you get your dash R, and and you can, you know, you can you can isolate it right down on the right down on the thing. And then and then you can for loop that stuff, right? So you can do for name in backtick if you want if it's in a script. Uh, do uh, echo wait echo I don't know. I mean you could print off even. Printf. I mean, let's just echo it. It already echoes, right? But uh, name. I mean, you, you, actually, you don't even need to do that. There's a better way to do this too. So I'm, I'm trying to make a contrived example for you. So, but you can actually do that with this. You can say uh, this. You can say I want to have name. Uh, this is so cool. I, I really love this this thing. I got to tell you, isn't that cool? 
Isn't Tad cool? I, I mean, I just, I love that you can do that. I, I love that you can just, you can just add stuff to it and it just gets it. It's just not confused. It's just so stinking cool to me. <laughs> My FOMO is over. So, so YQ is exactly the same. It's just that it has, you have an E here, which I think is a bug. I think they should have made that the default. And then they could have got rid of that command. Um, and then you just do the same thing, but you do YAML. And, oh boy, what did I screw up? I don't think it has full support. Uh, because SRUL, uh, you know what's funny? I changed it. It was JSON, and then I put JSN because somebody complained because they were, they were, I used three-letter suffix on YML. It's one of the biggest religious debates in all of like structured data. <laughs> so I just learned something today that YQ is crap and can't do what this does. Or uh, can it? Maybe I'm going to eat my words here. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, I did it. Huzzah. Yay. I take it all back, YQ. Let's be friends. Um, so look at that. JQ. Let's do the YQ. YQ. JQ. Same thing. All right. There you go. Hey, Jason. It's not Jason. <laughs> I have never, ever, ever heard of anybody doing JSON. In fact, the official... Okay, we want to eat, let it end on a good note then? Okay. The official... This is usually what you're supposed to have. And actually, I think JSN is a conflict with something else. Uh, and according to the uh, YAML creators, YAML is the way to do that. But uh, the cloud-native Kubernetes people thumb their nose at that and support both. And... Frankly, you don't need the suffix half the time. You're piping from it. It's something else anyway, so it doesn't matter. But there, there you go. I, I feel much better ending the day like that. That is the way both in, both both authors of the specification intended their suffixes to be. So I'll let you guys fight about that. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep doing this because this is fun. I like it. Let's see, watch. JQ, JSON. All right, so what do we do? Let's change it, change it to something else, you know? You can do all kinds of things. You can you can put stuff back together. You can loop. It's it's like the the parser you always dreamed of, uh, and 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 it deals with the the most important data. The other thing too is you can curl that right out of stuff. We already saw that, right? Look back in the video, and you can curl stuff right off a website API and go right to the heart of of the JSON and get right to what you want. And I'm going to make a plug for Keg. The plug for Keg is that every website would have a data.yml file or yaml. I don't know. Right now it's yml on the spec, but we'll see. And and that you could go to anybody's site and you could request data.yml and you would get all the fundamental data from their site as yml. Just saying. And that you would you could do that. You could do that. <laughs> yeah. You could you could do that as um, a, a static page. You wouldn't have to have a server or anything. Part of the static site. That's part of Keg. So. Uh, uh, oh man, my keg stuff is all over the place. Last I heard, keg.sh is the best place to go, but it's still kind of out of date. So yeah, uh, afk.works and keg.sh. I think those are the two. Again, it's 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 it was we were in the middle of writing the spec again. I've been working on that for seven years. Yeah, you can read all about my sad story there. Anybody who's watching this who's known me for the last eight years, we uh, skill stack pros in like 2016 started something called the essential web. It was just a rethinking of the web. We started making devices and everything. We were just going to use Markdown as the new basis for the web, period, no HTML, and ha directly rendered to device and not no intermediate step. And we were just going to make everything out of uh, JSON YAML at the time, Tommel, <laughs> which is why I got into Tommel so heavily. I'll, I'll tell you that story tomorrow. How about that? Tomorrow we'll talk about the Tommel story when I made File System as a Database, FADBA, and got really, really, really into Tommel. Uh, and then kind of wrote the, I wrote a huge blog back in the day that, that about why YAML won. In fact, you could probably still find that on the internet and I'll, I'll put that out there for you. So, uh, uh, YAML, Tommel, uh, JSON, oops. Yeah, it's a, it's a medium post. I wonder if it's out there. Why is, what's this? There it is. There's my, my good old, my medium page. My medium page is still out there standing strong. Represent 2018. You can't modric one. Oh, you can't? I bet you can. I bet you can. 
keep working on it. <laughs> I think YQ has problems. De Palma, I couldn't do it either. JQ does, but YQ can't. I think YQ has the bugs. Let's figure that out and send up a bug report for them. They have over 900 bugs. Today I wrote in my set, in my Zettelcast, and I'm like, it's time for me to replace this thing. We need to rewrite YQ from scratch. Yeah, the truth is we need to rewrite the JQ library and add to it so that it parses the minimal YAMLs to support JSON. And then and then we could like add YAML support to JQ and we'd be done. I'm telling you, if you want to be involved with that at all, I would love to be involved with that effort if you guys want to work on that. So uh, updated February 13, 2020, GitHub and GitLab, CICD, YAML file has really become the standard .yml, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, if you want to read why I think that this says uses TOML for strong reasons, Rust uses TOML, blah, blah, blah. We'll talk about this tomorrow. All right, that's all I got for today. So I'm going to be, uh, be canning the stream and saying goodbye to everybody. If you're on YouTube, thanks for watching. And uh, if you're on Twitch, uh, hang around if you want and listen to music. Uh, come on any time and, and join us. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll keep plugging away. Tomorrow is TOML day. So I'm going to post uh, this video or yesterday's video to YouTube and this video and uh oh right and then uh i am not going to be doing a boost tomorrow so you can look in my twitch for the schedule there um normally it's just weeknights right so the next official boost will be monday night at 7 p.m eastern and we'll do another one then and we'll be doing tomal and i and i which ought to be really fun that'll be a real blast from the past for me and then uh that's it. That's all I will have, have for you. Hopefully you have a great a great day, great rest of your Saturday. I um, will likely be back tonight. I can't promise that, but I, I may be back tonight doing a little bit more code. Maybe not. Maybe I just go to bed and get up early tomorrow and work more on my uh, my my fortunes database, my code, my quotes database. And I'll be doing some Go coding today and tomorrow uh, with my command box. Uh, composite monolith library, if you want to, it's a commander for Go if you're interested. That's what I'll be doing. And that's all. Bye.